Welcome to this discussion on governance. I'm Catherine Machariello, and joining me are David Boshane and Karen Pelzarski from the Rhode Island Philharmonic. David is executive director, and Karen is board president, along with Babs Moller, managing director of the Louisiana Philharmonic, and her board president, Hugh Long. Rhode Island and Louisiana Philharmonic Orchestras received the League of American Orchestras MetLife Governance Grants for board development. Made possible by a generous grant from the MetLife Foundation, these grants provide orchestra boards with financial support to help them strengthen their governance practices. In this session, we will be discussing how board members engage successfully around the long-term fiscal health of their orchestras. Karen, I'd like to start with you. When the Rhode Island Board uh, took the League Self-Assessment Survey, results showed a high level of confidence in the board's financial stewardship of the organization. What do you think contributes to that, and what are the key indicators your colleagues and other orchestras should look for in their own organizations? Well, our organization benefited, I think, from a rocky road uh, where we started a few years ago with uh, poor financial uh, reporting. And what we did when David Beauchene became executive director uh, particularly was to fortify our finance committee with uh, terrific members of the community from finance, uh, corporate leaders, uh, accountants and so forth, and it became a core of the board. Uh, we then took that finance committee and uh, we required or, or suggested that board members uh, join it when they first became members. We suggested that other board members attend even though they weren't on the finance committee, and it became our core to, uh, from which everything else came. Um, we, be, we began to understand uh, financial um, reporting better. We began to understand cash flows were very important, whereas we hadn't done those before. And we were able from there to understand uh, where we were going, where we were headed. The whole board, the entire staff, in understanding financial matters, were able to predict and react to issues as they arose much better. Why do you think it's so important that everyone on the board understand the financial reporting tools the organization uses, uh, both to assess short-term and long-term viability? As chairman, you, you have a big responsibility in engaging the board more actively in looking at the orchestra's financial model and fiscal underpinnings, as you've said. Um, how do you go about doing that, and why is it so important? Well, I think we as board members, I, I'm always uh, stressing, and David does too, the importance of uh, the, the fiscal responsibility the board members have to the organization. Uh, we cannot survive without that. That's, that's our core, and we need to be cognizant of that going forward, particularly in the economy that we've faced in the past few years. This has come to the forefront. And we've learned, I think, that you know, other board uh, boards that I've spoken with uh, tend to organize board meetings with less emphasis on financial issues and financial matters, thinking that uh, sometimes uh, strategic discussions and so forth are more important. I, I think the core in our board has become the finance. We have a very strong finance committee, and I think that that has shown uh, to be a success for, for our organization in particular. Hugh, things are a little bit different in Louisiana. Uh, you're known for the large number of musicians who are actively involved in governing the organization. And recently, you um, have been developing a number of regional advisory boards. In thinking about your own situation and how it might translate to other orchestras who are seeing changes in their boards, what might you say about the challenges of keeping people focused on the big issues of financial management that, uh, that Karen describes? How should they go about it? Well, as you alluded to, uh, we're a little different in that uh, about one-third of our trustees are musicians who typically have two- to four-year terms. Uh, and I think uh, any objective observer would uh, reach the conclusion we have, which our musicians are uh, insufficiently compensated. So at, at one level, uh, it's always been pretty easy to keep the focus on the fiscal dimension because... Um, the, the people who are seeking uh, sort of better uh, financial circumstances are a significant part of the board. Um, that said, um, it probably all hasn't hurt uh, either that uh, my own background is uh, finance and financial management. Um, but when the musicians started 
this orchestra 20 years ago, they always had very good financial reporting. Um, they just keep telling me that there weren't enough finances to report. Um, but as that founding group is shrinking after two decades, uh, we're uh, bringing newer, younger musicians to the table uh, all of the time. In addition, uh, although our community trustees is a fairly stable group, we're expanding that with our regional boards. So we've got uh, a lot of new blood coming uh, in onto the board all of the time. And our largest board committee is the finance committee. And one of the typical ways that in the, the musicians especially are uh, coming through service on that uh, particular board committee, but also uh, the regional folks who are moving toward our board as well. Uh, and um, everyone is very involved since a major strategic goal is improving uh, the financial lot of the musicians. Uh, the orchestra president, who is one of the 11 musician trustees, and I and our Babs, is our managing director, get together every week. Uh, we all see the same weekly financial and development and ticket reports, and uh, we, of course, share those with uh, our colleagues uh, on the board. And simultaneously, our regional advisory boards uh, have become a, a real source of community trustees. Actually, that's how I got onto the, the legal board. Uh, it was from one of the advisory boards, and our newest uh, board member also has uh, moved on from one of the advisory boards. But we focus uh, not just on, okay, how's the current uh, financial report, the current activity statement, but we, we focus on our uh, statement of position, our balance sheet, and the structure of the organization and, and how uh, uh, stable uh, that fiscal posture is. And no board meeting goes by that I'm not putting up there some historical trends and seeing how things are evolving as we look at that uh, fiscal position. It's not just this year's uh, balanced budget, but it's, it's trying to figure out uh, how we get to long-term fiscal stability. And would you say that there's widespread participation in those analytical discussions and widespread understanding? And Karen, you could answer that too. Well, certainly not every uh, trustee is uh, strong suit is uh, the fiscal part, uh, but I, almost everybody on the finance committee, probably 80% are also community trustees or musician trustees. And so when they get into the boardroom, um, because of the self-interest of the musicians and the significant number of community trustees who, who get it and uh, can read a financial statement, which we've worked very hard at over the years, um, those discussions are with substance. I, we have a similar uh, posture where we have a lot of uh, very fine members of a finance committee. There were certainly board members where finance is not their forte, um, but we, again, we encourage everybody to um, come to finance committee meetings, and we certainly uh, heavily report on finances at every board meeting. So, Babs and David, let me ask you, as the executive leaders in your organizations, you're challenged a little bit with getting your boards busy with annual fundraising, which is critical to your short-term uh, health, and thinking more strategically about the long-term health of your orchestras and what's reflected in balance sheets and cash flows and long-range planning, et cetera. How do you work with your board president to keep people focused on those important long-term strategic decisions, risk management, financial oversight, um, so that you ensure that the board's fiduciary responsibility doesn't end when they write their annual fund checks? I think one of the keys at the Louisiana Philharmonic for the relationship between Hugh's position and my position is this opportunity for pretty constant communication. Um, and as he's indicated, that sometimes includes the third leg of what we call here the three-legged stool, which is to have the orchestra president in those discussions as well. Because it's key, I think, in all of these leadership positions here to actually talk the talk. 
uh, which in this case means in addition to what we are presenting people in, in financial reports, also providing them with the kind of information that causes them to look at the broader field. So it's very common here that we're pushing out magazine articles, we're pushing out blogs, uh, we're doing some of our own writing and with thoughts about these strategic topics and long-range uh, considerations that we move out through, mostly through email, so that people have a chance to read these things, consider them, think about them, talk about uh, this with other folks, and when we get to the board meeting to be able to have some thoughtful discussions on the topics. How about Rhode Island, David? How, what do you guys do there uh, in terms of keeping your board focused uh, strategically? Well, I think... Uh, at Rhode Island uh, and, and maybe many communities right now, thinking long term has been made more challenging by the 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 economy uh, and the, the the fiscal crises that many of us have been in over the last uh, three years. Uh, but at Rhode Island, we're trying to do that by engaging in a really broad uh, strategic planning process uh, of which actually this. Uh, this work with the league and with MetLife was a, was a key component. Um, and, and as in Louisiana, we are bringing in consultants from the outside. We are looking at the field broadly uh, and asking first the strategic planning committee, but also the whole board uh, through retreats and through uh, board meetings dedicated specifically to, to long-term planning. Uh, we're looking at these issues uh, nationally and then reflecting back on our own realities here in Rhode Island and how they apply and what kind of decisions we need to make uh, uh, both short and long term for the health of the organization. Yeah, I think you make a good point about the the threats to strategic planning uh, when when the situation, the external situation, is is volatile and unpredictable. Uh, I'd like to ask Karen and you, as we've seen this happen a, a number of times, is uh, bad decisions can often be made by boards who are reluctant to make hard choices on their watch. Um, sacrificing really long-term viability for short-term uh, success. What advice might you have for your colleagues about how to shift a board's perspective from short-term gratification, like, oh, gee, we balanced this year's budget, or we reached this annual fund goal, or we got this grant, toward a more long-term strategic approach to financial decision-making, where the bumps in the road are absorbed into a, a sort of longer perspective, and the board's uh, thought process is more about grappling with sustainability than, than sort of year-to-year -year living? I think strategic planning is critical to that. It, it, it takes off the floor the, the, uh, the day to day and makes everybody think about long term strategy. And with a very good consultant, it can be even, even better. But we've done strategic planning. Uh, we're in the process of that right now in a, in a big scope kind of way. But we've also um, started using annual retreats for the development committee and annual retreats to look into certain issues as vehicles by which we're not in a board setting, but we're in a different setting to think differently and strategically. And the more I've um, participated and overseen those kind of uh, retreats, the more I'm a believer that they can be incredibly useful to uh, extract from uh, people who are fearful of the day-to-day -day and making budgets on an annual basis their great ideas as to the future. So it's been really helpful for us. That's great. Hugh, would you like to add to that? Yeah, well, first I would absolutely uh, second agreeing with uh, everything Karen just said. Um, I would also, uh, and I guess I've become an advocate of this over time, uh, uh, we do not have term limits uh, on our board, and uh, as I've reflected on that uh, over the years, uh, I think that that is actually uh, a good thing because uh, you get away from this uh, on-my-watch notion that, uh, oh, if I can just make it through the next two years and everything's fine by then, then I don't have to worry about the long term. 
there is turnover on uh, our board, but it's not because we ad- we're asking people to sit out uh, the next round. And so the vast majority of our community trustees uh, have been on the board for an, a number of years, uh, and so they're thinking about the long term because they're not going to disappear from the board in the short run. And although the musicians uh, self-select into shorter terms uh, for a variety of professional reasons, the fact is that every month they're going back and you know all of those services with their colleagues who are asking them what's going on, and those colleagues become the next musicians on the board. And so there's a continuity there that necessarily is concerned with the long-run fiscal health of the organization. Um, that coupled with the uh, thing I mentioned earlier of always trying to present some historical data and how we're moving against the trends, etc., cetera, uh, also helps keep that long-term notion going along with the strategic planning and the retreats, all of which obviously are made substantially more challenging uh, by an external environment that's bouncing around as much as it is. It sounds like in both Louisiana and Rhode Island, going through this MetLife process and the assessment and the changes that you've made and refinements that you continue to make uh, are a good con- uh, cont- making good contributions toward the stability and sustainability of, of your efforts. So congratulations for that. And thank you very much for what was a very interesting discussion, Babs and Hugh from Louisiana and David and Karen from Rhode Island. We really appreciate your participation. Thanks so much.